He says, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. So which means, you know, the Lord was ministering to me from last week about this thing we call deception. You know, many of times when we hear deception, we normally don't associate it with people that we call fathers of the land or people that preach and teach the word of God. But Jesus is saying that said, if ye continue in my word, which means or which suggest that you can start in truth, but along the way you can deviate. So Jesus is saying that if you continue in my word, Dr. Daniel, so which means that you can start in truth and end up in deception. But the sad thing is that there are a lot of men of God that started very well that we associate truth with them because they started preaching, teaching, and crusading about the truth. But along the way, they started preaching something because they wanted to excite the people and they wanted people to accept them whichever way that they are. But Jesus is saying in the book of John that if only you will continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. You see, some of us, we started in truth, but we are now swimming in deception. So Jesus is saying that if you will continue, so or so forth, there is a condition here. You can start in truth. People will know Dr. Daniel as the man that preaches and teaches the truth. But maybe along the way, he will give up truth and begin to preach something else. But because we know Dr. Daniel to be a preacher of truth, when he's even preaching deception, we think that he's preaching truth. And that is what is happening in this dispensation. So Jesus is saying that if only you will continue in truth, then ye are my disciples indeed. The reason why some of us, sometimes we deviate from the truth or so forth, is because we don't want to lose certain people in the church. So we compromise. And anytime there's a compromise as far as the word of God is concerned, deception is giving birth to. When we compromise the truth, Deception is inevitable. So deception is not something that is coming from some occultic camp or some, or so you know, when we talk about deception, oh, we know, I don't want to mention it, but these people there, we know that. No, no, no. There are people who are preaching the truth, who used to preach the truth. Sometimes they preach the truth, they dilute it. Yes, still, you know, they will preach the truth and dilute it with deception. So you will not know whether they are preaching the truth or not. And these are the people tonight the Lord wants me to speak about tonight. And that is why, also, <laughs> you hear men and women of God. Somebody wants the verse. It's John 8, 29 to 32. So, so also, sometimes you hear men and women of God, we gather, and the conversation that we are having, hey, you know, we say jokingly, you know, there are certain messages you can't preach to because, you know, I will be laughing about it. When you preach, you might lose certain people. And some of these people, we call them, I mean, church pillars kingdom financiers. And so there are certain messages you've got to be very careful. You better not preach those messages. So a lot of us men and women of God, we have become motivational speakers. We are exciting the people. We are preaching messages that each ears want to hear. So we have become men pleasers than God pleasers. Listen, deception is not far away from you. If you are listening to me, say, say to yourself that deception it's not far from, for all you know, you are even living in deception. Deception is not far from any one of us. You can be preaching the truth, but the moment you compromise the truth, you can be deceiving the people. And sometimes, also, the unfortunate, the sad thing and the pathetic thing is that you can be preaching deception and not knowing that you are preaching deception. Hallelujah. So a lot of us, we compromise. We don't want to lose certain people in our church, we compromise because we don't want to offend anybody in the church. We compromise because we don't want to lose certain kingdom financiers in the church. Because if you are not careful, these are the people that are financing the church. You will lose your people. Can I suggest to the church that Jesus was the one that said that he would build his church? Church, I want to encourage a man of God, a woman of God, 
Listen, if God has given you his word, just preach the word. If God has given you a, a word for a season, just speak the truth. Some people will leave. You need to understand that even Jesus, when he was on this earth, he came, he was truth himself. And yes, the people came and left. So it doesn't matter who you are, how anointed you are. There are certain people that will come, they will leave because you are speaking the truth. And they say that oh, so far, bro, but sometimes you come to church, never over, you will leave. But listen, you are there to please God. I want to encourage a man or a woman of God that is listening to me tonight or will listen to me later that listen, don't compromise the truth. Hallelujah. So my, my, my number one point, you know, I want to look at Matthew 24 from the verse 24 to 25. And I'm taking it from the NIV. That is the new international version. NIV. Matthew 24, 24 to 25. I'm still on deception. And I read, it says, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So I have told you ahead of time. This is the very words of Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, for false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect, the believer, the spirit-filled, born-again, speak, tongue-speaking one, the preacher, the teacher. But also, for, can I break, can I try and explain this thing to us? You know, many of times when we hear false messiahs, we are thinking of some, some pastor be some false prophet be dropping from some uh, from planet or, or coming from the sky so that we know that this one here is bad, bad, you know bad Jesus he's a he's a false prophet no 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 the bible was talking about some of us men and women of God you see false messiahs and prophets will appear and perform great signs so in our churches we see some men and women of God doing great things for the kingdom healing the sick I mean, praying for people that are sick, the dead are coming back to life. They are performing signs and wonders, but they are false prophets. Why is the Bible saying this? Jesus said that I have told you ahead of time. So Jesus was speaking in the past, but for the present, for us today. So he said, I've told you ahead of time. And this is what we are experiencing as a church in this time, that there are false prophets. They are here with us. Listen, they are not going to appear from the sky or some planet. The dangerous thing about this prophet is that some of them started in the truth. So we associate them with what? With the truth. Hallelujah. So if somebody that started very well preaching the truth, teaching the truth, when they begin to mix the truth with some sort of deception, we cannot detect. We will not call them false prophets. Because in our eyes, as far as we are concerned, these are people who preach and teach the truth. So when they mix it with the elect, sometimes we find it very difficult to what? To decipher. So the Bible says that the children of Berea, the people of Berea, after the word of God has been preached to them, they will go and begin to set the scriptures for themselves and say, what this man of God said, is it the truth? Today, some men of God, they have become the gospel. So whatever they say, it is the gospel truth. I beg to differ. We need to understand that no man, no messenger is above the message. Everybody is subject to the message of God, which is the word of God. It doesn't matter how anointed, how many years you've been in ministry. Everybody is subject. And that is why some of the people we call true, true prophet can be false messiahs. They are not going to draw from the sky. They are not going to come from a different planet. They are the same people that started in truth, but now they have mixed it. Because the Bible says that study to show yourself, say, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So some of us, we are wrongly dividing the truth. And when you wrongly divide the truth, you are speaking, teaching, and preaching deception to the people. You might, I won't frame you. It is not, you're not, you're, I mean, you, you've not gone for any power. God has called you all right but you are not following the instructions of Jesus Christ. So you have become a deceptive preacher. Hallelujah. So a false prophet 
is one who does not speak truth. Who is a false prophet? A false prophet is one who does not speak truth. So please, church, we shouldn't deceive ourselves that a false messiah, a false prophet, is somebody that's going to drop from some ocean or coming from under the, the marine well. That this one, they will know. Oh, this one, they, we don't know him. There are people that you and I will know. We have authenticated their ministry. But some way, somehow, some of us, some of them, they have mixed it with something else because we have become men pleasers. God help us. My number two point. A lot of people have left church because they were misinformed. Dr. Daniel, a lot of people have left church because they were misinformed. What am I talking about? You know, sometimes people come to church and we say to them that life without Christ is full of crisis. So they come to church and if God is taking them through the process, taking them through the process, they might think that there's something wrong with their faith. Is this something that I am doing? And so instead of us teaching them that this Christian work is a work of trials and temptations, this Christian work is a work of test because you cannot be promoted without being tested by the master. The other day, Job said it. He said that he knew the way that I take. And after he had tried me, I will come out as gold. In Psalm 105 and the verse 19, it, is, it was talking about Joseph. He said, until his time came, the word of the Lord tried him. So when people come, instead of us preaching this kind of messages, that Christianity is sacrifice. Christianity is work. Christianity is having a deeper relationship with God. Christianity is maturity. We don't tell them some of this thing. And we tell them that life without Christ is full of crisis. So now I've received Christ. Why am I going through the things that I'm going through? One deception that is killing the body of Christ. And that is why I disagree with that phrase that what life without Christ is full of crisis. We need to teach the world and we need to inform them very well. That is what the Bible is all about. Tell them the truth. You see, a lot of people want to hear sugar-coated messages that they will get excited, but their lives will not be transformed. And that is what a lot of us preachers are doing. We have become motivational speakers, motivating people, giving them messages that their itchy ears want to hear, and spiritually they are not growing. They come to church and give some testimonies and they get excited. I've got a new car, I've got a new cow, I have a new house, I have this thing, and we get excited. Listen, those things are secondary, and that is why God, Bible said that, seek ye first the kingdom. These things will follow. What is the kingdom? The kingdom is a personality. The kingdom is Jesus himself. Build a personal relationship with him. And in building a personal relationship with Christ, there are things that you will fall, you will rise, you will be tested, you will pass the test. Sometimes you will fail. You will pray for mercy. But along the way, you are growing your maturity. That is the process. And these are the messages we need to preach. And let's stop this motivational message. That's awful. It is very, very deceptive for a preacher to tell the church, if they are not paying their tithe, but they are feeding the poor, they will soon become poor. It is something that a very renowned preacher in Africa said, and people think that is the gospel truth. It is a deception. How can you tell people that if you are not paying your tithe and you are feeding the poor, you are helping the needy, you will also become poor because you are not paying your tithe. Somebody will ask, do, you, do I believe in tithing? Yes, I believe in tithing. Do I tithe? Yes, I tithe. Do I believe in manipulating or putting fear in people for them to pay their tithe? No, I don't. Church, please, we need to come to a place where we need to understand that giving is grace, that we preach and we pray grace into the life of the people. When people come to a place of understanding where they will understand, and listen, let's be real, let's be honest, let's be transparent with the people. Listen, we cannot advance the kingdom without money. We cannot build the church without money. Let the people know that there are needs in the church. And let's stop this preaching. That I heard the man saying that if you don't pay your tithe, you will not go to heaven. How? So now, Titan has become the passport for us. What is salvation? Then Jesus coming to die on the cross of Calvary was of no use. So if you don't pay your tithe, so now the world think that this thing we call church is all about money, money, money. How can you tell somebody that if you don't pay your tithe, then you won't go to heaven? Deception. And I call this one childish deception. 
That's awful. This is childish deception. Why are we, this, listen, this is deception. So tithing, let's preach the grace of tithing. When people, listen, Osofu, man and woman of God listening to me tonight, some of us, we are living in fear. We don't know where the next bill is going to come so that we pay certain bills in the church. I want you to understand, I came to encourage somebody. If you believe and you know that Jesus has called you and he's the one that said that he will build his church, just rely on Jesus Christ. It doesn't take the multitude for Jesus to show his glory. It can even take just two or three people in the church. All you need to do is just pray for pillars. Pray for genuine pillars. People who love God and have a personal relationship with him. Listen, God can choose to bless anybody at any time. It can even you be you, the pastor. God can bless you financially. That you not solicit money from the people. You will do it yourself because you are also part of the church. Am I talking to somebody tonight? That's awful. There are unbelievers who are helping the poor. And they don't believe in tithing. And yes, so God is blessing them. So what about that? You know why? Because we have, we, see, we've got it twisted. We think that blessing is all about money. Also, we need to inform. And that is why I said my next point, the, the, the point that I'm talking about is that people have left church because they've been misinformed. So they'll tell you that when you come to Christ, I mean, everything will be, I mean, your life will flourish. Financially, you will not struggle. You need to have faith. And people come and what, when God is taking them through the process, they re, and then they give up. They stop going to church because they were missing fault. That is deception. So ask yourself, a teacher, a preacher, a man of God, have you been teaching and preaching these kind of messages? Are you coercing people to give? Because you think that if they don't give, you will struggle to pay the rent. If God is the one that called you, he will provide. Hmm. So the unbelievers who are doing this, also, we need to understand, listen, this earth is governed by principles. In Genesis, it said that as far as the heavens and the earth remain, it says seed and harvest time will never cease. So if the Muslim, if the unbeliever is helping the needy and the poor, it is a principle they will receive blessings. And I'm going to prove to you with this scripture. Hallelujah. Let's look at Psalm 41. Psalm 41, from the verse 1 to, to the verse 3. So if you are telling me that if I don't pay my tithe, if I don't bring my offering, then God is not going to bless me. God is not going to rebuke the devourer and that the enemy will steal all that I have. I want you to understand that this is deception. It is deception. Also, in Psalm 41, from the verse 1 to 3, and I'm reading from the AMPC, which is the Amplified Bible Classic Version or Edition. I want to say, it says, Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is he who considers the weak and the poor. Man of God, listen. The Lord will deliver him in time of evil and trouble. The Lord will protect him and keep him alive. He shall be called blessed in the land and you will not deliver him into the will of his enemies. The Lord will sustain, refresh, and strengthen him on his bed of languishing. All his bed, you, O Lord, will turn, change, and transform in his illness. So the Lord will bless them that considers the poor. What is blessing? It is because of some of us, we don't even know what blessing is. We think blessing is just riches. And please, can I say to the church that God never promised us riches. God promises us blessings. And so he said to Abraham that, Abraham, I will bless you, that you shall be a blessing. He said, Abraham, I will bless you. He didn't say, I will make you rich. He said, I will bless you, that you shall be a blessing unto others. What is blessing? The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 22, it says, the blessings of the Lord, it make it rich. It is the blessing that bring it riches. And added not so. Also, do you know there are people who have money, they are very wealthy, and yes, they can't sleep. There are people who have money and yes, they cannot even enjoy their money. But the Bible says that the blessings of the Lord, it make a rich and added no soul. So you cannot be blessed and be in pain where you cannot enjoy your blessing. So there are certain things that we are calling blessing. For all you know, it is man manufactured, not God manufactured. So we got to be very careful the things that we call blessings. And that is why sometimes we say that if you don't bring your tithe, if you don't pay this, if you listen, I believe in giving. I love to give. You cannot be a believer and not be a giver. The Bible said that for God so loved the world that he gave, but there's so much deception in the church. Now, if you don't bring money, God will not bless you. 
What about unbelievers who don't even believe in Titan and don't even give their offering, but financially they are doing well? Are you trying to tell me that the blessing is all that it is? That we, I mean, when we talk of blessing, it is just wealth, money. So this is deception. This is deception. This is deception. God never promised us riches. He promised us blessings. What is blessing? One of the greatest blessings that a man can receive is to have a, a quality and a better relationship with God. Another blessing that we can't take for granted is to have a quality and a blessed relationship with your family. To have peace, to have protection. Listen, also, there are people, squatters, who live in uncompleted buildings, and yes, they are more happier than people who live in unconditional rooms. Don't tell me blessing is just money. It goes beyond money. Please, stop preaching this kind of deception in the church, and stop telling people that if you don't bring your offering, if you don't bring your tithe, God will not protect you. God will not protect you. Also, you know what? Sometimes, you can bring your tithe, and God will not give you money back, but what God will give you might be something that money cannot buy. Can money buy good health? No, money cannot buy good health. Can money buy protection? Money cannot buy protection. Please, let's stop all this. Finally, I know my time is up, but I've got three or four more minutes because doctor took four minutes of my time with the recording. So I'll take the four minutes. Hallelujah. Amen. Finally, one deception that is killing, I know there are a lot of deception, but one Deception that I want to talk about tonight, my final um, submission, is the deception that sometimes people will tell us that we all serve the same God, but just we use different routes. And there are a lot of us believers who are bought into this lie. Oh, you know what? I mean, they call this Allah, others call this Buddha. We call ours God, but it's the same God. Please, I want to tell us and suggest to you, if you don't know already, we don't serve the same God. Hallelujah. We don't. Any religion, group of people or person who don't believe Jesus is God, don't serve our God. If they tell you that Jesus is a prophet, if they tell you that Jesus is one of the people, oh, we believe in Jesus, he's a prophet. Anybody that sees Jesus as a prophet and not as God, doesn't serve your God. Also, listen, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is one thing that is confusing some of us, even men of God. We can't even preach Trinity. You cannot separate the Father from the Son, neither can you separate the Son from the Father. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word is God. So why are we telling people that we serve the same God? I heard a very uh, renowned man who calls himself a believer. I'm not going to mention his name. Maybe some of you, you've seen the video. He said that, you know what? Uh, he believed that, I mean, Jesus is not the only way to God and that there, there are other ways, there are other ways to God. <laughs> and sometimes these are some of the things that some of us believers will buy into. Oh, you know, it, it makes sense. I, I mean, the other way, but Jesus said that nobody comes to the Father except through me. How do you cut Baba? How can you go to God, who is Jesus, without going through Jesus? What Jesus was trying to say that I am he, I am the Father. So for you to come to the Father, you need to come to me. And that's why I said, because you have seen me, you have seen the Father. How can you tell me that this God is a prophet and he's not God? He's the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that said that let there be light. Jesus, when God was creating, he was there. And so he said, I am. When he said to the Pharisees, they were confused. He said, before your father Abraham, I am. He didn't say I was. He said, I am. Jesus is God. So don't let anybody deceive you that we serve the same God. They will tell you that the same God, but different names and that we use different ways to get to this same God. That is deception. There is only one way to get to the king of all kings. And that way is Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the king of all kings. Please, I want to end here tonight. I know there's a wonderful woman that is coming after me. But if you didn't hear anything, I want you to understand that the false prophet is not one that is dropping from the sky or coming from from the bottomless pit or coming from the marine well. Some of these false prophets and false messiahs are living with us. They are in our churches. They are preaching on radio. They are preaching on television. And so I want you to understand, please, if you pray for anything, pray for the spirit of discernment. Because you don't know, the Bible says that even the elect, if possible, might be deceived. God bless you. Pastor Isaac, God bless you so very much, so very much. Uh, that was very profound. And um, there is one thing that is said to climb us the whole thing that we do not serve the same God. 
It's very common with people now because of um, our, our nature and our system and how the world is now. People mention all kinds of things. We serve the same God. God bless you because we do not say Jesus bless you. It's God bless you. God bless you. And we think we all worship the same God. And it's, it's a very good point because the generation is really being deceived. Because the Buddhists and um, the other people, everyone thinks we are worshiping the same God. And God bless you for coming out and saying it just as it is. It doesn't matter if somebody is going to begrudge you. That is the truth. We do not worship the same God. Jesus is God. He's not just a prophet. It's not just someone that you meet when you climb in some spiritual realm. No, he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. So if you have said it, God bless you so very much. And I believe that there are so many things that he said about giving as well. Because today people cannot even come to church. They come to church and it's always like fundraising. They come to church and it's just about money. The ultimate sacrifice was on the cross. Even that one, we've not paid for it. Because that's why every day becomes like a living sacrifice. We are still paying. We are still enjoying it. We are still, so we cannot demand people to be giving us money. Can you pay God for the sacrifice on the cross? No. So why are we putting this burden on people to bring money? Everything must be about money. Come and sow seed. Everything is about come and sow seed. Uh, it's very important that we make the word of God go out there to everyone without putting conditions to it. Because we are, we, we are actually destroying and, 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 and taking people away from the truth. Man of God, God bless you so very much. And uh, I know that um, your, your ministry will be blessed. I know that you stand for the truth. And this is what we are looking for. It's not about the numbers, but about the quality, about the truth. Irrespective of the number of people that you, you, you minister to. So far as you are giving them the truth, heaven is happy. You can have a whole stadium and lie to them and say, we all worship the same God. Yes, they will like you. You have all the followers that you want, but that is the lie. And we are not going to buy into that. God bless you so very much. Hallelujah. And all the way from Ghana, we have a great man of God, Pastor Esther Saki from Covenant Keepers Prayer Fellowship. Um, today, she's going to be a blessing unto us. Uh, man of God, if you can unmute her, and we're going to have her now. And I believe you are going to be blessed. Just stay put, and um, you'll be amazed at what is going to be unveiled unto you and uh, your life will not remain the same. So just stay put, and whilst we wait for Pastor Esther Saki. Man of God, can you unmute her, please? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, people of God. Amen. We thank God tonight for our lives. For this wonderful gathering. I always say that when the people of God come to a place, when a, when a gathering, when a solemn assembly is called like this, it, it dates back into the, the, the calendar and the ordinances of God. That in this year, at a time, a day, a moment like this, a people will gather at the feet of the altar of God to seek the word of God, that which purifies that which sanctifies, that which breaks us and delivers us from the very death of the enemy, that he, he lampards us every now and then. And I believe tonight is one of the nights. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Isaac, God bless you so much. You laid a solid foundation. You laid a solid foundation. And, and taking it up from where you left off, taking it up from where you left off, I will first of all want to lift up prayer tonight right now before just uh, one minute and let's lift up prayer that oh lord every deception every word that has entered into my spirit that mm. is a gateway of deception tonight by divine authority i break it off my head mm. i break it mm. off my spirit i shake it off i shake it off any word of deception that is a, that is a form of heaviness upon my spiritual intellect tonight i shake it off i wear it off me in the name of jesus let's lift up prayer shortly. father tonight we have come to the altar of prayer we lift up prayer unto you O lord and we ask that tonight every word of deception every word of the enemy Anywhere that have entered into our spirit, that is a gateway for the enemy 
to bombard us with all kinds of thoughts, evil thoughts, thought of slavery, thought of limitation, thought of struggle, thought of subjection. Tonight, we break out of it by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus, we arrest any spirit of deception hovering around our homes, our, our families, our churches. Tonight, anyone that is listening to this word, anyone that listened to the word of God from the pap, from the man of God that just spoke, Pastor Isaac, we pray that let the word, let the anointing of the word break the spell and the yoke of every deception over our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We, we, are, we are taking it on another dimension. We are taking it on another dimension, speaking on the subject deception. I will come from the standpoint that deception have been with us. Deception has been with the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. And among the numerous reasons why God saw the need to bring onto the scene that his only begotten son to rescue man from that bondage. One of it was deception. One of these was deception. In that when Jesus Christ came on the scene, there, there, there was a, a group of religious sects, a group of religious people that, that have infused the bloodline of the people of the kingdom of God with a spirit and the food of deception. And these people were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They had just turned the whole thing about the word of God upside down and have reduced it to a state of religiosity. And God, knowing that religion always subdue and subverts the children of God, came on the scene to break the children of God out of their deception. Hallelujah. When Jesus came, he encountered all kinds of people, but the very people he won the body of Christ of was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Even to the extent that even John the Baptist, when he was baptizing the, 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 the children of God, when the Pharisees came unto him, he asked that who are these brood of vipers? Brood of vipers. Brood of vipers. And, and I take my word from, from Matthew chapter, Matthew 22. If, if we can quickly, let, let's first look at Matthew 3 verse 7. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 3, from the verse 7. And I read, is that, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Hallelujah. He said, brood of vipers, these are spirits that suck from us. These are spirits that inject all kinds of poison into our spirit. Hallelujah. And that is the state where the body of Christ has found itself. Pastor Isaac said it all. We have men of God who started well, and today they, 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 they dwell on all kinds of teachings that does not align with the word of God. They, they, tell, they, they, they infuse all kinds of fear. They, they infuse all kinds of uh, 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 trembling into, the, into their members. That, 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 that makes them rather fear them and not the word of God. And this is the spirit of the Pharisee. That which Christ came to take out of the way, it has found itself into the body of Christ again. And tonight, as we listen, as we dwell on this word of deception, we decree and declare by all the men of God that are present, we leverage on the mantles or, or that, that are present tonight, and we break the power of the Pharisees. We break the power of the Sadducees. We break their power. We break their power of religiosity over our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone peddling in the word of God, 
under the guise of the spirit of the Pharisee, tonight we decree and declare, oh Lord, let them be exposed in any form and in any shape. Let them be exposed as they speak the word of God. They cannot take the word of God for granted anymore. But from tonight, anyone that holds the word of God and tries to deceive their people, let the spirit of God expose them. In the mighty name of Jesus. John the Baptist saw them and said, you brood of vipers. What's that the viper do? Pastor Daniel, a viper can hide with you for so many years and you will not know. But the day it launches, that is it. And that is what is happening. They try, they deceive the members. Come to church, give your life to Christ. They come, oh, everything will be okay. And all kinds of deception. And by the time you realize, they introduce you to all kinds of doctrines, which is not in accordance to the word of God. But Bible made us know something, that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So our work with God is just about Jesus Christ, the body, his living, his living body, his living blood, the word of God. That is all that we need as Christians. We don't need all the, the communities that they add onto it. Of course, we are in a dispensation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can give us so many directions, but that is not to say that make it a doctrine. That is not to say that make it a doctrine. Hallelujah. It is not to say that make it a doctrine. Let's quickly turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians 3, verse 10. Paul said something. And when, 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 I, was, when I was preparing for this word, that is the word that God gave me. Paul says something. And, and I read. He said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death, hallelujah, that I may know him, that I may know that he is the way, that I may know that he is the light, that I may know that he is the power, that I may know that his word is everything that I need. The reason why my fellowship is called Covenant Keepers is that in the book of Jeremiah 31 verse 33, God said that for I will put my word in you. And I will covenant with you with my word. It is about the word of God and nothing else. So when a child of God comes to that place where you daily partner with the word of God, it will be difficult for you to be deceived. It will be difficult for that spirit of deception, that fairy dart of deception to be shot at you and it will be established. It will be difficult for when the enemy shoots that fairy dart of deception, through the word of God that is being polluted by men of God, by, by, by all kinds of people in cassocks, yet they don't carry the spirit of God. The word of God that is seated in you, which is Christ, which is the embodiment of Christ, will dispel that, that, that word of deception. And it will not have a foothold on you. Hallelujah. And that is exactly what Paul summarized here. He said that I may know him and his resurrection. When a child of God comes to this place and really understand the Bible, Pastor Daniel, when I read this, then I said, ah, if this is it, then this is a summary of the Bible. For me, this is the summary of the Bible. What is it that you are going through that will, that, that will propel you to run to a man of God that will deceive you? If you know the word of God, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. What is it that is dying in your hands? The power of the resurrection will bring that alive. What is it that is going wayward? The power of the resurrection will bring it into line. What is it that is contrary to the word of God? Anything that is contrary to the word of God is basically dying. Hallelujah. And Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. It means the word of God daily brings us to that place to resurrect the God kind of life in us. To resurrect it. So when you understand this scripture as it is, as a child of God, you will not struggle with deception. The moment you smell it, you shy away from it. The moment you get a hold of it, you stand boot to boot to it to say, I am not buying this. I am not taking in this. Hallelujah. 
The Pharisees did everything to pollute the minds of the people. And Jesus said, don't mind them. I have just come to restore back the kingdom of, of God unto you through the word, through the partnership with the Holy Spirit. Is it that the Holy Spirit, I'm the only one that carries the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I'm the only one that can operate in discernment. I'm the only one that can operate in the prophetic. The fivefold ministry are mantles. At any point in time, once you align yourself to the word of God, God can just lay that mantle upon you and you operate in it in a short while for the furtherance of the kingdom and for the advancement of the kingdom. Hallelujah. For me, I can testify to it. I don't know which of the mantles I operate in, but every now and then, once I submit myself to the Holy Spirit, come on. There are times that I'm ministering and sometimes I get amazed after. I will mention the names of people and sometimes I get scared. I'm like, hey, what, what is happening to me? And, and, and there will be confirmations. But that is not to say I am a prophet. At that moment, I was operating in that mantle. There have been situations where I have won stubborn people to Christ. That is not to say I'm an evangelist. There are places I go when I minister, the feedback is like we are revived. And I won't deceive myself to say because of that, I'm limiting myself in the apostolic oil. There are people who carry that, but we shouldn't leverage, or I mean, we shouldn't just limit ourselves to say that, hey, because of this, everybody is now operating in the prophetic. Everybody is operating in the prophetic. Why is this so? Pastor Daniel, there's this lady at our church. You know, I, I go to Action Chapel, Ogojo Branch. And for almost three weeks now, the Holy Spirit will not let me sleep on this lady. She carry a pure prophetic oil. I'm praying, I'm praying. And sometimes I'm like, God, I don't even know her name. Say, yes, pray, pray, pray. Squeeze out any form of carnality out of her. And this is somebody that needs to, to be broken off the spirit of deception. Because I'm sure when nobody would want to tell such a person that, hey, this is the mantle you carry. Today, we are being suppressed everywhere. We are being subverted. And as Pastor Isaac said, because of no coffee, because of what pastors do, it's because of what, but, but Pastor Daniel, for me, I always tell people, I said, if this is what is called ministry, then I don't understand why people are struggling out there. It's about the Holy Spirit and nothing else. When we come to this understanding, as Paul said, he said that I may know him. It means this resurrection power is in dimension. And that is what, when we go back to John, I think the last scripture, when the apostles went to the tomb after Jesus Christ was risen, and they went there, when they got there and they saw the linen and the handkerchief, Bible says, they, they, they just assumed. And they just said, oh, once we've seen this, he's risen and maybe he's gone to heaven or whatever it is. But Bible says, Mary Magdalene said, no. I am not in for those things. I, I, it is not about the linen. It is not about the mantles. It is not about the country. It is not about the religiosity. It is about the body. I am looking for the body. It is the body that will confirm to me that indeed my Lord is risen. My Christ is risen. And when I know he's risen, I know for sure restoration is my portion. Deliverance is my portion. Healing is my portion. And that is exactly what Paul said. He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. So believers out there, let's rise up. Pastor Daniel, God bless you and all your team for this putting up to putting together these meetings such as this for us to teach. We we'll come and we we'll discuss. I, and, and what Pastor Isaac said was just mind-blowing was just mind blowing that, that, that you put yourself a group of people together and you are teaching the pure word of God and another group of pastors will gather and lift up soulish prayers against you. <laughs> Why? Is this the kingdom? Are we building the kingdom or we are building somebody's kingdom? 
But if it is the kingdom of God, let, let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to the word of God. That is all we need. Through the word of God, the word of God can give you so many directions. The word of God can lead you, give you light, bring deliverance. Hallelujah. So people of God, it is a wake up call. Let's strive as Paul said that I may know him. As, as the other apostles went and they took their handkerchiefs, let, 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 it's good, but let's look for the body. Let's look for the way. Let's look for Jesus Christ himself. Let's touch him. Let's feel him. Let's desire that encounter, that divine encounter with him. Every now and then when we get the opportunity to come before the presence of God, that we, we may know him and the power of his resurrection. And when you know Christ and the power of his resurrection, Pastor Isaac, what is it that will die in your life? When that resurrection power is manifested in your life. But we don't know the power of his resurrection, the significance, which is the word of God. His resurrection, which is the body, is the word of God, is the resurrection of the word of God. At a time where the Pharisees were teaching the people religious activities and all kinds of things, Jesus came on the scene and said, let's go back to the basics, the word of God. The oracle of God. Hallelujah. So for me, that is my take on it. That let's break from this deception of tokens, mantles. They are very good. But let us not make it a religious act of the spirit of the Pharisees and the spirit of the Sadducees. That is what is operating in the kingdom of God now. Religiosity. We organize programs for what, what is the impact? What is the, what is the reason? What, what do we hope to achieve? What, 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 what kind of impact do we want to see on the members? And do we achieve it? Does something, something break loose in our, no, 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 no. This program, the level of spiritual growth we wanted to see in our members, we didn't see. Let's go back. When I born, became born again in the late 80s, Pastor Daniel, Literally, every now and then, your pastor will call you and will be checking up on you. Today, how many pastors do that? When you have money, when you have influence, they will check on you. There are times that God will lay on, in, on, my, on my heart, call this person, take partner with them three days, pray concerning this issue. I know people do it, pastors do it. But these are some of the basics that God is taking us to. Teach the word. Be interested. Take a whole family and tell yourself for, th for the next three months, I, Pastor so, so and so, I am monitoring this family physically, spiritually, economically, everything. No, we will not do it. We will not do it. But I believe if we come to that place of knowing the power of his resurrection, and aligning to the Holy Spirit, which is the word of God. As Mary Magdalene at the, at the point of resurrection did not go just for the point of contact, but went for the real thing, which is the body of Christ. Let us go back to it. For the word of God is sure. The word of God is true. The word of God is perfect. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It, it brings deliverance. It brings healing, restoration, refreshment. What is it that you want? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. With this, we break every spirit of deception. Each and every one of us. When I read this thing, Pastor Daniel, something broke loose out of me. I was like, mm, 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 mm. there is something I've been lacking all this time. How, how well do I know the mystery behind the resurrection of Christ? <laughs> how well do I know it? The mystery behind the resurrection that Paul said, with all the knowledge that I have, this is one thing that I desire to know more. Mm. There is something out there. There is something in it. And tonight, I believe, is a wake-up call for us. That this thing that John said, brood of vipers, the spirit of the Pharisees is with us, is around us. 
It can even be operating in us in a subtle way. Each and every one of us could be walking in a, in, in a form of deception in a way. But tonight, by the mercies of God, let every form of deception operating within us be broken, be subdued, and brought to nothing. And let the power of his resurrection come to bear in our lives and in our thoughts. We hold every thought of deception in captivity. And we decree and declare, let the word of God come to light. Let the power of the word of God, let the anointing of the word of God break every spell, every yoke of deception upon families, upon churches, upon individuals, pastors. Some pastors uh, 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 are walking in deception ignorantly. But that is no excuse. But tonight, by the mercies of God, we come out of it and we break out of the spirit of the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 We are blessed, uh, woman of God. Uh, like I say all the time, when I meet people who do not watch left and right to speak the truth, I say God is calling. It means that they know that they've been called. They know that there is something that is urgent in the kingdom of God. We don't have time to please anybody. We don't have time to please men of God or followers. Or we, we just want to preach the word of God just as it is. Just like John the Baptist, whether I like the way he's dressed or not, he's just speaking the word of God. Repent and be baptized. So we are here to just speak the word of God. And there's one thing that he said about the Pharisees. Today, we have modern day Pharisees. We want to be born. We want to be known. We want our church to be known. Even our name, we want to be known. Even on flyers, if you don't write my name well, if you don't put the right picture, I'll get angry. That is more important than the message that a man of God is going to preach. They will even ask questions. How many people are coming to this program? You see, we've given focus to unnecessary things and, and people are dying and perishing. And we are looking at our suit and how wonderful we look and all that. And I'm wondering, Jesus will be saying, is that the people I came down to die for? Ah. Is that the value of my death? Is that the value of salvation? Is that the price that I paid for? Mm. And then when we are given opportunities to preach, we look for big words to entice people. Who cares? Mm. The most important thing is that people will be saved. Whether you speak tree, dagati, English, whatever you speak. So far as you speak to people and the word of God cuts through their heart, just as Paul was doing, the word of God has been communicated. And that is all we need in this generation. That will be one. Because we claim to be Christians and yet we are fighting one another. We are deceiving ourselves. We are deceiving. I cannot even promote your church. I cannot even promote what you are doing because I think yours will be bigger than mine. Meanwhile, it all belongs to God. Are we not being fools? There was no excuse when God called the people of Galatians Fools, all you foolish Galatians. It is true. We claim to be Christians, and the way we act, we don't act as one. We can't even gather to pray for people. It, it, it always must be about us. If it's not me, then forget it. Yeah. If it's not about money, then I'm not coming. You invited me to your church without money, I'm not coming. You can't even hold the hands of young ones to empower them. Tell them you have this gift. Come and do this thing for God. You cannot even give someone their platform because you think they will outshine you. Mercy. God have mercy. Woman of God, today is your first time on the court network, but it, it, it doesn't look like uh, you, are, you are one of us. God bless you so very much uh, for your availability, for you know making time to bless us. And I, I, I pray that whatever God has sent you to do, may you fulfill it. Whatever God has given unto you, that grace to empower people, that you do not always look inward, but you are always looking how to enrich people with the word of God. May God give you more because that's how the kingdom operates. If you want to, to receive more, you have to give more. And as you are giving, may God increase you and even open greater doors for you. May God open platforms for you. Platform that you, you not even talk for yourself. They open it so that you bless people because that is what we are called for. God bless you so very much. May God continue to expand your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, we have our brother um, all the way from the U.S., Pastor Eric Obin. 
Um, maybe you've known him, you go to YouTube, you've seen him, it's, um, the, the Word and Spirit Network. He, uh, he also has something called um, My Story, uh, His Call. I, I think he, he, he will make that straight when he comes. Uh, he's doing very great for the kingdom. The most important thing is that we want the truth to be heard. If they hear the truth and they don't know Dr. Daniel, we don't care. If they don't know yeah. Esther Saki, we don't care. If they don't know Isaac, we don't care. So far as they know Jesus, we are good. Man of God, you are more than welcome. Can you unmute him, please? Can you hear me, man of God? Amen, amen. Amen, amen. amen. What a blessing to be part of this uh, fellowship. In fact, it's a privilege, you know. The, what I say is that the common denominator is the fact that we are all believers, irrespective of where you belong to, your tribe, where you come from, your church, your ministry, it doesn't matter. As far as the call is about the kingdom, that is all that is in this issue. Hallelujah. And I want to thank God for the vision of this fellowship. Uh, those who are uh, paved the way. Those who have started, uh, when I understand that the deception started somewhere around last week, I was following quite a, a bit uh, when we started with Anakazo, the deception. And I want to say that God bless us all for responding to this call. And I also want to thank uh, my first two speakers who have spoken extensively on this subject. Well said, well explained. Uh, the most important is that as being led by the Holy Spirit, so shall it be and nothing else and nothing more. As uh, brother said, my name is Eric, Eric Cobain, and uh, I do something similar to what he's doing, where I invite so many men of God all over the world. I've interviewed so many, many, many people, great, great fathers and mothers of the land, talk about their story before the call, and I do similar things like it. So it's indeed a great privilege to be part of this. So let's set the ball roll, but before that, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for a time like this. Holy Spirit, have your own way. I pray for utterance. Speak through me. Use me. I empty myself of anything. Have your own way. Touch the heart of people. May every heart be fertile to receive the word. I thank you, Lord. I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, once upon a time, somebody was called to come and differentiate between a preacher and a teacher. And the person said that a preacher is someone who shouts, and a teacher is somebody who talks slowly. So tonight, I don't know where you're going to place me, whether as being a teacher or a preacher. Hallelujah. But all the same, may the will of the Holy Spirit be done. So I want to continue from where my speakers have started. And uh, I also want to touch on uh, how you want to place it. But I want us to look at the book of Genesis. We're talking about the subject of deception, the subject of deception. So to the layman, one wants to know what deception is. Deception is portraying or presenting something as the truth. Meanwhile, that is not. Or presenting to us something which looks like the original, but in other sense, it is not. In other words, you are showcasing something which is fake, but doing all means possible for us to believe that that is the truth and that is the original. And the reason why I want us to look at the book of Genesis is that Genesis serves as the source or the base of all the scriptures. The author of the, so the first author of the Bible being Moses founded the foundation of doctrine of what God wanted you and I to know or hear from the book of Genesis. So let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 3 and let us look at how Moses spoke about deception. Moses spoke about, if you want to put it this way, false prophecy or disbelief or this truth, whichever way you want to put it, from the origin of the scriptures and how the rest of the authors also built they built their foundation based on what Moses said. So look at the book of Genesis chapter 3. 
I believe I'm, I'm teaching the way I've started, but maybe we'll switch to preaching. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1. It says that now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall eat of every tree of the garden. If the Bible is yours, ask my, my, you want to look at the word serpent. So the word serpent is a Hebrew word, nakash, nakash, nakash. It means somebody who deceives, a deceiver, somebody who comes to portray something. Then he uses the, another word, he said it was more subtle. So the word subtle is also in the uh, Hebrew meaning as somebody who is intelligent, somebody who is tricky, somebody who is sneaky, somebody who is able to pervert, to change something which is the original and presented in a fake or in a different manner for you to believe. So the question that I want to ask, I want to learn today as led by the Holy Spirit is that how then does this deception shows or portrays to us because we are able to know the original when we know what is fake or in other words or the vice versa when you know what the original is then when the fake is presented to you you can boldly see that this is fake but if you don't know what the original is and you are being bombarded with so many other things then you'll be in a situation of not knowing and identifying what the truth is. Hallelujah. So if you look at what it says, so the first thing that we need to bear in mind when it comes to deception is that devil always brings about deception when he puts doubt to the word of God. So let's follow the scenario or the story in Genesis chapter 3, and that is where I'm going to dwell most of my uh, uh, my point on so that we can easily identify so easily how deception is portrayed so that today if something comes to us we'll be able to know the difference now the reason why the church is in chaos today the reason why the body of christ is in a mess today is partly partly because of you and i because we are not able to know what the right is Therefore, when the bad is presented to us, we just accept it as it is and just go away. But I believe that one of our speakers made a mention of the Berea church in the book of Acts chapter 17. What do they do? Before they will even believe in the gospel, they have to go and check and find out if what Paul was teaching them was right or wrong. So they had also a role to play. That is why, that is why if you look at the epistles, what Paul spoke much about the church is to walk in faith, walk in love. That is the ongoing work of the believer as so far as you get born again. Once you get born again, there is also another part of the believer to walk in. The walk in over there is a verb. The walk in uh, over there requires the believer to also take initiative. Now, let's look at what uh, 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 the verse 1 says. It says that now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said. That is the first point. So the first point is to put doubt, don't believe when it comes to the word of God. Doubt, 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 doubt. Had God said. Had God said. Had God said. Had God said, had God said, he put doubt. So the question we want to ask ourselves today is that, do we know the scriptures ourselves? That's the first thing you need to ask yourself. Do you believe in the word of God to be given? Paul, uh, uh, Peter spoke to the church and he said that as newborn babies, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. There has to be the yearning factor of you, the believer, to know the scriptures. Paul also spoke to Timothy and he said as from thy childhood, ye has known the holy scriptures. Ye has known the holy uh, scriptures, which is able to make ye wise unto salvation. Wise is the Greek word sophizo, to make you wise, make you clever unto salvation. There is that knowing aspect of you and I. So what the enemy does is that he puts doubts in the word of God to us. But how do we counter this? 
we counter this to know the original from the feet when you and I study the word of God together. Let me give you a practical scenario. Why in this world, and we do say it today, that a man of God should tell you that until you get your breakthrough, meet me at the beach for me to bath you. Where is it in scripture? For me, for you to conceive and have a child, I have to sleep with you. Where is it in the Bible? That speaks about this. But because of ignorance on the part of you and I, the believers, where we don't want to study the word of God, we tend to believe what is being said. That is also another aspect of the whole concept when it comes to deception. You arm yourself. You build yourself up. You study the word of God. So the first point, he put down to the word of God. Look at what the enemy said. Yeah, had God said, had God said, had God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Challenging, putting down. So if you follow the story carefully, immediately the enemy threw in that shot, that missile, that punch. The rest followed in that order. So that is the first point. Now, the next point is that when he challenges the truthfulness of the word, so the first one is that when he puts doubt, when he puts doubt, two, when he challenges the truthfulness of the word of God, challenges the truthfulness of the word of God. Now, much of the 23 verse 9 says that God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and will he not do? Had he said, will he not do? It's a question. So if you believe that whatever he said, he would do it, that clears away the doubt and, and, the, uh, and, and the challenge to the truthfulness of the word of God. But let's follow back and look at how the whole thing played out in Genesis chapter 3. So if you go along with me, now let's look at what happened. We all, we all know the story, so I don't want to just read from line to line, but look at the verse 4. Say that, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Challenge the truthfulness of the word. So first put doubt, then he went for the in verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the tree of but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Challenge the truthfulness. Doubt. Yea, had God said, you shall eat of the fruit, you shall not eat of the tree, uh, or, 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 uh, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden, who doubt his belief. Challenge the truthfulness of it. Verse 4. You shall not surely die. So the question is, who do you believe here? Who do you believe here? It challenges the truthfulness of the word of God. Who do you believe here? Hallelujah. That is the problem with the body of Christ today. That is the challenge. That is our biggest problem. To sit down and read the Bible ourselves. To sit down and have quiet time ourselves to sit down and have fellowship like this. How many of us will be willing to even join and be part of this fellowship? How many of us will be willing to do that? How many of us will even have Bible studies? You know, sometimes when I have this, my story is called with this fathers, um, Archbishop Takia Boy, uh, Bishop Takia Boy of the Future Bible, Archbishop Christian Popo of Lighthouse Chapel International, just name them, they build them all over the place. And this question that I love asking them, I ask them, what was so different in your generation than what we see here today, our generation? What was so different? But in their line of thought, you realize that in those days, when they meet, what they ask about is how many scriptures have you read? When they meet, how many prayer, how many hours of prayer have you had? When they meet, it's all about the scriptures and the sense of spiritual growth. But now this one we meet. How many goals did Arsenal uh, score? 
How many goals did, did Chelsea uh, score? What is the latest transfer on board? Look at the things that we think of. Look at the things that we think about. So as much as we tend to look at this, now let's look at the other side of the coin. Hallelujah. Look at the other side of the coin. So one, he puts doubt in it. Two, he challenges the truthfulness of the word. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Which are teaches. So now he's now calling God a liar. That's what he's saying. That God is not truthful. So the issue of false prophecy, the issue of not speaking the gospel, the, 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 the issue of not speaking the truth and trying to sugarcoat it, trying to, to make it appear as good, started from the book of Genesis, the origin of all the scriptures. The foundation. Every book of the Bible has its source from Genesis. Every book of the Bible is in the Bible. It has its source from Genesis. So even as we are reading this, we will look at how Paul also explained this concept to the church in Galatians to understand what Genesis chapter 3 is. So now three, let me go to the third point a lot of time. Third point is that after he had challenged the truthfulness of the word, then three, he introduces his own message. His own doctrine, his own teaching. And if you follow through, yeah, through the story, that's exactly what he said. After he actually, then he came. Oh, you will not die. Because God is saying that if you if you eat it, you become like this and that. Then he introduces his own, which is not the gospel, which is not the message, which is beside the truth. Then he introduces it, then you receive it. So now let's look at how Paul presents this unto us. So Paul, once upon a time, went to the church in Corinth. Then he said something to it, which I love so much. And let us look in that scripture. We will find out the effect or the repercussion of what deception is in line with the gospel. When the gospel is not preached, when the word of God is not preached by another thing. So if you, I always say this and I say it again and everywhere that I go, the moment I ask you, are you born again? And you tell me you are born again. The next question I ask you is what gospel did you hear? Or what message did you hear that made me born again? Because another part of it is being spoken and it's been preached. So maybe you might have heard something else which was presented to you as the gospel and you said you are born, but you are not born again. So not everybody that we see in church today is born again. That is why we have a problem in, in, in the church today. Not everybody you see is born again. So the first question I ask is that if you said you are born again, what message did you hear that brought about your salvation? If you're not able to tell me the message that brought about that you're not born again, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the church. You can be preaching from the pulpit. You can be a pastor, you can be a, a prophet, but you are not born again. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. You can be playing the instrument in the church. You can be singing in the choir. You can be doing so many things in the, in, in, uh, in the church. But the Bible outlined what the gospel is. That brings about salvation. Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God Unto salvation, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. In other words, the gospel has the potency. The gospel has all it takes. The gospel is not about your philosophy. The gospel is not about your achievement. The gospel is not how big or, or how large your church is. The gospel is not how decorative your church is. The gospel is not about the school that you attended. The gospel has the potency to bring about salvation. So I ask myself, if you did not hear this gospel that brought about your salvation, then you are not born again. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the church. So the question we want to ask ourselves then is, remember I said from the beginning, for us to know the faith, we have to know the original. So now the question we want to ask ourselves is, what then is the gospel? So I was about to read another scripture, but it was for the sake of what I've said, let me move 
further and look at that. I'll come back and summarize what I'm saying. Now, this is what Paul said in First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through to 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and where ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now the phrase according to scriptures means that the summary of the scripture, the scriptures had to do with the Genesis through to Malachi, that is the scriptures. So Paul is saying and making references to the scriptures or the Old Testament books, as we call it, as, as, as the scriptures, as it is. So according to, as it has been narrated, as it has been said by way of prophecies, by the prophet, this is what he's saying according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then to the 12. So if this is not what you had and you received Christ, then you're not born again. That is deception. You see, listen, the greatest form of deception in, uh, I mean, in life is to deceive yourself. The greatest form of deception is to deceive yourself. Thinking you are something that you are not. That is the worst of all deception. So thinking that you are born again, but you are not born again. This is the gospel. So let's look at what Paul then speaks to the church in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech. Watch it. Now it's giving us the characteristics of what the another gospel, the deception, the false prophecy, the false teaching, the false doctrine is. So I did not come to you with the excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. In other verses, that, that he says that I did not come unto you with the enticing words of man's wisdom. That's another version. Look at it. Understand the phrase. I did not come unto you with the enticing, enticing, enticing words of man's wisdom. Keyword, enticing words, man's wisdom, not God's word. Man's wisdom. It looks so beautiful. Very eloquent. Put grammars together. Upon grammars. Knows the Greek, knows the Hebrew. Knows all, all, all of them. He said, I did not come to you with the entire words of man's wisdom. Look at what he said. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weaknesses and in fear and in much troubling. And my speech and preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but, but, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. That's the opposite. So when the true gospel is not preached, now this is where it lies the people. They become shallow. They become shallow. Hallelujah. They become shallow. That is it. So the deception is to present something. What do we preach in our church today? What do we preach in our church today? How are we discipling the people? Listen, ministry is simple. Going to win souls, discipling them. Period. Nothing else, nothing more. That's what our ministry is about. That's what our ministry is about. Ministry is about soul winning. You bring them to church, you disciple them, for them to also partake of the gospel and also go and preach. That is all the ministry is all about. And this concept can be seen and followed through through the books of the Old Testament, as we call it. Exodus chapter 18, when Jethro visited Moses, so that this thing that you are doing yourself, you kill yourself and kill the people. Then he gave him the criteria of what ministry is. The art of the apostles did the same. 
Acts chapter 6. We, we, uh, the apostles said, said, and the 12 apostles said, and the 12 said, we, 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 we cannot leave the word of God and go and save it. We cannot do that. Two things, preaching and the teaching. Listen, it, 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 it is sequential. Paul did the same thing. Acts chapter 19. Paul did the same thing. It runs through the scriptures. That's why I said the foundation is from Genesis. Listen, any other thing besides this in ministry is deception. That's all. That is the greatest commission. That's all. So the question is, how are you leading the people? Oh, my time. Let me see. My time is up. Let me know. How are you deceiving the, the, the people? Yeah, yeah, I think I have a minute. Yeah. How are you rallying the people? How are you leading them? How are you guiding them? Listen, any other thing beside this is deception. Just take it once and for all. And let us do the ministry the proper way. You see, I always have this philosophy in life. And that's my philosophy. When we are doing it, let's do it. Listen, if you don't want to do it, stop it. That, you see, that is my philosophy. So anything that I'm doing, those who know me, I do it with the last breath. Last breath. Again. Today, as I come here, I've had three interviews. Three solid interviews. This is my last uh, 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 ministry work I'm doing for Saturday. This is my last one I'm doing right now. I've had three of them. Back to back ministry. I've done three interviews, solid ones. Listen, let us go back to the ancient path. And let us do the work. So I'm summarizing it. The issue of deception, so, uh, so, uh, deception is to present something for you to look as the original, but it's fake. But the question is, how then are we able to decipher? How then are we able to know that this is wrong when you know the original? So the key to, the, to deception is knowing the original. That's all. And it's all about the word of God. Knowing the word of God. If I know the word of God, you can't deceive me. No matter how. If I know the word of God, if I'm a female and I know the word of God, and you come and tell me that you have to go and sleep with him before I conceive, I know you are lying. So to know the original is to know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. May the Lord help us. May the Lord guide us. May the Lord lead us. May we know the truth. Listen, church, we've come to a dispensation that you have to know God for yourself. I'm telling you. Is that the, 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 the disposition we are in? Of? Know God for yourself. How many of us have our quiet time? How many of us pray? I don't need a person to come and tell me to pray. No. I don't need a person to tell me to study. No. If you come to my, my studio, to my office, so many books. I study every day, every hour. I don't need that. Because listen, every individual that you see is a sheep. God is the shepherd. Your pastor is a sheep. He learns. He studies. I'm also a sheep. Church member, I'm a sheep. I also learn. I also study. Let's cultivate the habit of learning and studying the scriptures. And that will be a great source of help to the problem of, of deception in the Bible. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, Pastor Eric Obin, thank you so very much. I know you've had a very tough day, but yet you've made time for us and we really, really appreciate it. And I want to say that may God bless your ministry and all that you're doing for the kingdom. In these very last days that we need the word of God to reach all nations, you are doing it and more grace be multiplied unto you. There are a couple of things that he said because of time. He said a greater deception is for you to deceive yourself because most of us think we are Christians and we are not. And that day you are going to say, Lord, 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 and you say, I never knew you. And I think that will be the most painful thing that you ever hear. And you don't want to hear it. So today's an opportunity to take stock of your own life. 
and do not deceive yourself anymore. Maybe you call yourself a man of God. Maybe people see you in a light and you portray yourself to be so powerful and anointed, but then you have your secret life does not portray the image of God. Your secret life shows that you are doing totally a different thing. When you come before people, you are all powerful and you sound all anointed, but you are not the light. You are not the salt of this earth. I just want you to take this opportunity wherever you are and just submit yourself before God because you do not need to deceive yourself. Eternity is something that you do not want to play with. You do not want to please men so that you lose your eternity. You just want to live as God has sent you to live. So I pray in the name of Jesus, all those on this platform, those who are watching uh, on Facebook, wherever you are connected, I pray in the name of Jesus that any form of deception in your life you will give it up. You will give it up. And I pray that may the grace of God be, be multiplied unto you, that you will wake up in these last days and stand for the truth. God bless you so very much for joining. I pray that may God continue to sustain you, retain you, and maintain you in his word. God, that is the only key that will keep you away from deception. God bless you. And may he continue to increase you like never before. Like I always say, Go to the Cord Network on Facebook, the Cord Network on YouTube. Just take this content and give it to your friends. And I believe that you will be blessed. God bless you so very much for joining in to meet again next week. Stay blessed and highly favored. Thank you.